artist at, um, from the University of Oklahoma, Heinrich School of Drama, where she taught voice, speech, and dialects. She continues to teach directing at the University of Houston's MA for Drama Teachers. She is a founder of the Local Authority, a training and development business serving corporate clients um, who want to use their voice in more commanding and authentic ways. She holds an MA in voice studies from London's Royal Central School of Speech and Drama and an MFA in directing from the University of Oklahoma. Rena is the author of Voice and the Young Actor and the co-editor of Breath in Action and the former editor-in-chief of the Voice and Speech Review. Her honors include the Julian J. Rothenbaum Presidential Professor of Excellence in the Arts, the Region 6 Innovative Teacher of the Year by KCATF and ATHE, and she held the Wick Carey Endowed Professorship in the Arts at OU, and she'll present an exercise called Balls and Straws. Rena Cook. Thank you. I, um, I have to follow up with Tracy. Um, it is interesting to hear your own bio, and what it says to me now is that I'm just old. <laughs> <laughs> I've been around long enough to have a long bio. Thank you, Leslie Ann. Um, Leslie Ann was my first voice teacher and turned me on to voice, breath, voice being the core of acting. So I pay tribute to her each time I do the voice acting work. So before I start today, I have some things to pass around. And uh, let's see, let's have this, take a straw, take a straw and pass them around. I, I hate props, and I spent a whole career in the theater avoiding working on props. And now, as a uh, voice and speech trainer uh, who also directs, I have accumulated a whole suitcase full of props. Uh, and I'm going to share three of them with you today. Well, those are going around. I kind of like that theater in the round, Tracy. <laughs> giving us that inspiration. The balloons are going slowly toss them. I don't know if I have enough handouts to go around. I didn't know how many to plan. that 
starts us with deep central breathing and ends us with embodied speech. Now, if you'll notice on the second page of your handout, there are three monologues. I have found that when I go into a group of actors, and I say, okay, everybody just think of a monologue that you have at the ready. And I get blank stares from <laughs> half the people who make their living <laughs> acting. So rather than get the stares and then finally have to say, just use the Pledge of Allegiance, um, I give you three sample texts that you can choose from. I always pull out uh, the wind cover because it is one of my very, very favorite poems. And then a wonderful little thing from an A.R. Gurney play, and then a wonderful thing from a Tracy Letts play. So take 10 seconds, let your eyes cast upon that page, and pick the text that you're going to be working with for the next 12 minutes. All right, you've made a choice. You don't have to read through it. We will do that as we progress. Now, deep central breathing. We all work on it. We all have our favorite series of exercises to do it. Sometimes we start on the floor. Sometimes we stand on our feet. And we get so connected to the text and to the breath. Amazing things happen in the studio, yes? <laughs> And we see our actors transition to the stage, and you go, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> you were a genius in the studio. What happened? Well, there's so many things to think about. Clearly there are. The layers of things that we keep on actors once we get them on the stage, the thing that goes first and comes back last is deep central breathing. So the straw and the balloons serve as quick kinesthetic reminders. Oh, right. So I'm going to ask you to stand with your straw in your hand and your squirt in the other. <coughs> and we are going to fully breathe out and in, out and in through the straw on a five count. And my hand will count for you. This is universal symbol for breath is leaving the straw. This is universal symbol for breath is entering the straw. You don't have to do anything with this, but just pay attention to what might be happening here. All right? And begin with an exhale. Take the straw away. Look at your text and remembering what this center felt like as it was engaging with the natural, authentic, deep central breath. And read your text out loud. At each major punctuation, just reconnect with that breath in your center. Don't rush. Off you go.
Um, did you notice any deeper connection with the breath, reading a monologue that you're not at all familiar with? Huh? It was really interesting because I had no focus on here at all. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. all went, like, yeah, yeah I, I do the same thing when, <laughs> when a student responds the way I want to hear. But it, and I have tension in here, and this just took it all away. And, and it's, a, it's a quick rehearsal fix, right? You're mm -hmm. working and you know that your actors are just, nothing is really happening in the way of authentic <coughs> connection to breath. I will not let an actor rehearse when they are not connected to breath. Because what they learn is, I can say my lines and do my movements without ever being connected to an authentic breath. That doesn't happen automatically, does it? So I get out the straws or the balloons. So put your straw down and take out your balloon. Now, if anybody has a latex allergy, don't touch the balloon. <laughs> and if you've never blown up a balloon, there is no balloon shaming in this class. <laughs> I want you just to blow up the balloon. And then when it's about halfway big, stop and squeeze it off. All right? Your other focus is what is happening to my center as I am blowing up the balloon. Go. <laughs> That's okay. No balloon shaming. Pick up your text, read it again, and be aware of that natural movement in your center when the breath is deep. The inhale releases out, the exhale as you speak engages, and as you do this, make big space in your mouth. Off you go. Afterwards, it became about with if with force it was grounded and it came out much stronger than with the uh, straw, which was about in. Excellent. What else? Anything else? Yes. The balloon seems fuller. Yes, uh, less uh -huh. pointed. So it, 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 the range yeah. is fuller. Yes, yes. the yes. range. It reminds our body how much range of movement we have, and I'm sure you felt that the volume in the room tripled mm -hmm. when yeah. you were drawing deeper breaths. So when I have actors who can't be heard, yeah. right, and so they want to go like this, nobody wants to listen to that. We know that the, the prescription for being heard in a big theater is breathing more deeply and making more space. Uh, the other thing, more resonance happened. Yes. Like I can feel tingling. Yes. The sensation mm -hmm. was there, yes. so so my voice changed. Yes, it does. We are deep central breathing. Our, this happens automatically, doesn't it? The release for the in breath happens automatically, and many of our students don't understand that. They feel they have to gasp. 
and that the engagement also happens naturally with the desire to fill up the balloon or the desire to pronounce the text all the way to the back wall. So these are two ways that, that I use in rehearsal as a quick reminder that actors have to stay grounded with the deep central breath before they can begin to layer on the movement, the props, the relationships, the finding their love. I can do tennis balls, right? Now, after we get connected to deep central breath, sometimes the bodies have so much fun languishing in the breath that they forget that now we also have to be embodied. So a quick fix that I find is the tennis ball. I carry my tennis ball, the bag of tennis balls that we have in rehearsal. And uh, let's just throw a few out. I got a couple minutes here. Take tennis ball, take tennis ball. And would you guys come out in the space? Those of you who get the tennis ball, you lucky man. All right, come out in the space. Who wants a tennis ball? Script, script, no. Uh, no script. Thank you, Leo. Come on out. Um, and now just play with the tennis ball in any way you can conceive. It's as if your mother had said, go into your bedroom, I don't want to hear a sound out of you. Your only toy is this ball. Excellent. Now, as you continue to play in extravagant ways, add open vowel sounds. And as the ball goes up, your pitch goes up. As the ball goes down, the pitch goes down. Off you go. are making the discoveries 
right, that you have so clearly um, laid the foundation for it, created the architecture for these, this experiential learning to take place. And, um, and that you have begun to um, prompt, explain, deliver in a really cohesive, very um, clear trajectory and um, you know it, it's it's really wonderful your demeanor like sign me up for your next class right Thank you. the, the demeanor is just so wonderful you're clearly um, a master teacher I think um, I also appreciated there were two things that I thought worked really well in this. You identify that it's you know kind of a quick fix for rehearsal, but actually what, what it also does is create a pedagogical foundation that you can introduce in the training that then creates this kinesthetic muscle memory that can be touched upon very quickly in rehearsal, right? And, and you, you get a, an, an immediate response as a result of that. Uh, and I really appreciated that. And I thought that in, with, with very um, simple everyday objects, right, you've created the opportunity to identify and address multiple things very quickly. Um, and so there are lots of different types of, of um, discovery and learning and processes happening all at once. Um, and I thought that that really, um, worked incredibly well, so yeah. Um, I have tons of notes, but maybe I can pass it off to you, Dennis, while sure. I collect my thoughts okay. for a moment. Yeah, I agree that your, your demeanor and your delivery is very warm and funny, and it was, it was fantastic. And um, what I love about this is the simplicity of what you have going on here, and I don't mean that in a negative way at all, because I, I'm not a voice teacher, and I always find it difficult when I'm trying to explain voice to somebody else. Because, but what you have here, and maybe you don't intend it this way, but, but the idea of these balloons being this fullness in range and the straw, because the straw is pointed, it feels very much about intention and direction. So to combine the two in a very simple uh, way that you could use metaphorically later just seemed to me to be really lovely and really wonderful. And I don't know if that's how you intended it, but that's how it'd be like, is this, you know, are you a balloon right now or is there a straw like, Thank you. do you know what I mean? Because it also comes down to embodied when they are fully, have that full intention and are, are full in their breath, then they become alive. And so when you quickly remind them of that, it's, it's really fantastic. Um, and I love anything, any prop, that can make them feel like a kid. I always tell them, awake <laughs> your inner toddler. Like, that's how you should act. So anything that, like a balloon and a straw and getting them to play and like, getting them to release the balloon however they want. You guys are like the most tame people. Like, <laughs> but, like to let them do whatever they want with the balloon is really, is really fun. So they engage with that, that side of them. Um, I love the tennis balls, but I also wonder if there's a more fun ball than a tennis ball that you could play with as well. Oh, absolutely. You know, yeah, so like the tennis balls, like you got to travel with they them. So you can't come to yeah. Vegas with like, you know, those the big little balls. playground yeah. balls. But you know, I'm like, I imagine you can have several different types of balls with this one. Yeah. And they seem to like, it, it seemed to be nice how you were combining that with the text. And I thought that was really, really um, lovely how they were playing with the, the variety of that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I mean, I'm definitely going to steal this. Yes. That's great. Yes. Um, and if I could just do a shameless commercial plug, all of that is outlined in my book, uh, Voice of the Young Actor, and it's on display uh, with the Bloomsbury Methune. Great. Excellent. And, uh,